finally the arduino uno q lands in india i have been waiting for this since launch day on october 7th that was the historic day qualcomm officially acquired arduino and immediately announced the launch of the uno q top of the box bold arduino and uno q branding on the bottom we dive into the details first the tagline where arduino simplicity meets the power of ai linux and real time below that we have the specs connectivity microprocessor microcontroller memory and interfaces plus a qr code for the getting started guide on the sides we see it proudly labeled single board computer barcodes certifications and country of origin no more waiting let's get inside the mighty uno q is here we will get to the board in a minute first the paperwork you get a sticker for your laptop and i actually like this long format document style it looks pretty premium the moment of truth the mighty uno q the top side looks amazing densely packed and the bottom it's exciting to see what all these high density connectors are actually for quick question do you know how the arduino team actually designs these complex high density boards it's no secret even before the acquisition i was browsing the altium website and boom there it was arduino right there in the hall of fame listed among heavy hitters like bmw dell and amazon they all rely on altium for their multidisciplinary electronics wizardry why do they rely on altium because it is the premier pcb design software that helps designers bring concepts to production and here is the best part for you guys similar to apple altium has a strategy to help students gain practical skills through altium student labs you can gain the expertise needed to land internships and careers with top hardware companies whether you're a beginner or looking to sharpen your skills for your resume Altium guides you every step of the way. I've left a link in the description. Joining the Altium education program is a fantastic way to future proof your career. Check it out. Okay. Back to the star of the show. Let's take a closer look at the Uno Q. The brain of this powerful SBC is the Qualcomm Dragon Wing QRB2210 sitting right next to 2 gigabytes of Micron LPDR4 RAM. Just beside these two giants quietly sits the Qualcomm PMIC the PM4125 which manages the power distribution to keep these chips running. On the left we have the ANX7625 from Analogix. This is a MIPI DSI to USB type C bridge. This is important because the USB C port here does triple duty. It handles data, it acts as the display port and it powers the board via USB power delivery requesting a 5 volt 3 amp contract. Right beside the port is a physical power button. A short press turns it on and a long press of 5 seconds or more reboots the Linux system. Though note that this does not cut power to the board entirely. Another major player on the board is this module featuring the Qualcomm WCN 3980 this gives us dual band wifi and bluetooth 5.1 capabilities if you look closely the antenna is embedded right into the pcb but there's also a ufl connector if you need to add an external antenna for better range a really cool addition is this 8 by 13 monochrome blue led matrix it displays the boot logo and can be programmed for user interaction there are also a few rgb leds driven by the qrb processor stm controller and a power indicator led now the headers this is where it gets technical we have jctl which hosts the uart console and pmic controls jspi for dedicated spi and mcu reset the quick connector for quick sensor connections and of course the standard headers the classic arduino power analog 
and digital headers, making it compatible with the ecosystem we know and love. Let's flip it over. On the back, we spot the Kingston 16GB NAND flash memory, specifically EMMC 5.1, which interfaces directly with the Qualcomm processor. But here is the man behind the real-time magic, the STM32. This is a Cortex-M33 microcontroller clocking up to 160 MHz. It has its own 2 MB flash and runs the Arduino core on Zephyr OS. This ensures that while Linux handles the heavy lifting, this chip handles precise timing. Finally, we have two high-density 60-pin connectors. First, JMedia. This handles high-speed camera lanes via MIPI, CSI and display lanes. Second, the mixed signal connector. This breaks out audio endpoints like microphone and headphone lines, along with additional GPIOs. Now, as a hardware designer, here is my take on this board. Almost all the ICS are BGA packages and they have removed bulky ports like HDMI and standard USB-A, opting for a single USB-C for space optimization. It's evident that clear instructions were given from day one. Stick to the original Arduino Uno form factor. Let me tell you, this is a massive engineering challenge. You have a Linux processor, a real-time controller, memory systems, PIMIX and RF comms, all squeezed into the same real estate defined 15 years ago for a simple 8-bit Atmega 328P. The jump in power storage and bandwidth from the Uno R3 to the Uno Q is astronomical, yet the footprint is identical. This clearly shows the synergy between the Arduino and Qualcomm engineering teams. Kudos to them, it is a masterpiece of density. Alright, next step, let's power this up and see what it throws at us. Because the Uno Q uses a single Type-C port for power, USB and display, you need a USB hub or docker to connect everything. I'm using my MacBook Air dongle here, we will power it via USB PD. My mouse and keyboard go into the hub's USB-A ports and the monitor connects via HDMI. Let's connect and turn on the power. The power LED is on and look at that, the Arduino logo is animating on the LED matrix. That means the input power is good. Now I'll hit the power button to wake up the Qualcomm processor. The QRB LED is on. That means the system is booting up. This is another good news. The love for Arduino Uno Q begins here. We have the hardware running, but setting up the software and running the example projects is a beast of its own. So we are saving that for the next episode. Make sure you subscribe so you don't miss the software deep dive. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.